What this comes down to is, do you have faith that the advance of science is going to solve a lot of our problems? Now, what, what is amazing is that all the people who say that they love science so much, they don't seem to have a lot of faith in science. What do you mean by that? They don't seem to have a lot of faith in innovation. That is the actual thing that science does, right? It's not just that science can measure the changing temperature over time. Climate models are very often wrong because this is really complicated stuff. It's not just people falsifying data or being willful. Okay. This is difficult stuff. But what science is really good at is inventing new amazing things. Why would you count on human beings suddenly exercising self-control as a species as opposed to innovating in new and in, in, in amazing ways? Yes, exactly, exactly. That's the thing you should actually be betting on. The left doesn't want to bet on that. Instead, what the left would like to do is generate policy in the here and now that makes people suffer to no apparent end. Because by the way, all the measures that they are taking right now, Kyoto Protocol, Paris Agreements, that ain't going to do diddly squat in the long run when it comes to whatever carbon emissions are being put up into the atmosphere and what is going to stay there. Now, that's not going to stop our idiot elites like Prince Harry from talking about things like climate change. So Prince Harry, for some reason, is now speaking at the UN. Um, I don't know why. He, he's, he's the son who wasn't good enough to stay in the family. He's the one who married Meghan Markle and then proceeded to alienate himself from the entire royal family and then come to the United States. And I was under the impression we fought a revolution so we didn't have to listen to dolts like Prince Harry. I thought that was the whole point. We didn't want a royal family over here because then you have moron inbred royals explaining to us exactly how the world ought to work while being bossed around by their significantly more vocal spouses. I, 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 I don't think anybody was particularly interested in this, but the Duke of Sussex decided that he was going to appear at the United Nations. I will say that it was pretty hilarious that no one showed up for the speech. If you actually watch the speech, there's no one in the audience. Even the UN, which like you're being paid to listen to crap speeches. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? Even they were like, no, I can't do it, man. I'm going to go get myself a parking ticket. I'm never going to pay. Apparently, at this event, he talked a lot about climate change. He highlighted the havoc of it. And he said, how many of us feel battered, helpless in the face of a seemingly endless stream of disasters and devastation? Uh, here is Prince Harry, who, uh, why, why, just, just why, here he is. This has been a painful year in a painful decade. We're living through a pandemic that continues to ravage communities in every corner of the globe. Climate change wreaking havoc on our planet. Uh. With the most vulnerable suffering most of all. The few weaponizing lies and disinformation at the expense of the many. And from the horrific war in Ukraine to the rolling back of constitutional rights here in the United States, we are witnessing a global assault on democracy and freedom. Let's go. The cause of Mandela's life. He's a, he's a, he's talking about, demo, he's a member of the, he's only famous because he's a member of a royal family. Find a better spokesperson, people. He's literally famous because he was born into a family that is like pure aristocratic hierarchy happening right there. He's literally a member of a monarchic family explaining why democracy is being threatened because of Roe versus Wade being overturned. What? And then he's jabbering about the effects of climate change. Like he knows anything about climate change. Now, Prince Harry's the expert. That guy. He, oh my goodness. He, he's just become worse and worse. The, the Meghan Markle thing. I'm with Piers Morgan. Large-scale mistake for our neighbors across the sea. Him talking about the world being on fire again. This is, he said, these historic weather events are no longer historic. More and more, they are part of our daily lives, and this crisis will only grow worse. Oh, he, he lives on a giant estate in California. Oh, my. With his B-level actress wife, who married into a royal family to become a princess and then whined about it for years on end, claiming that everyone was racist to her after the entire British press talked about how wonderful she was specifically because of her intersectional identity. These are the people who are deciding policy. It's people like Prince Harry. They're no smarter than Prince Harry. 
They're, they're no wiser than Prince Harry. They're all just kind of like Prince Harry. They're sort of a hereditary upper class that have decided for everyone else that you don't get the air conditioning. Yeah, right. Because the air conditioning, you know, it might contribute to future global warming. You're like, wait, wait, it's really hot outside it now. I need the air conditioning today. Like, well, you know what? We can't, we can't let you have oil and natural gas because 100 years from now, there might be incremental increase in the temperature that will cause mass migration. And they're like, there's mass migration right now because of a giant war happening between Russia and Ukraine that is resulting in widespread devastation, not just in the region, but also globally because of the skyrocketing price of food. Really, nigga? That's causing migration crisis now, today. And you have our, our sort of elite class, the, the Prince Harry group, who are still making this case. And we're supposed to listen to them. And this sort of scorn drips from the people who believe that it's their job to rule others. There's an op-ed from, the, from a woman named Margaret Renkel, a contributing opinion writer, who covers flora, fauna, politics, and culture in the American South, which is a hell of a beat. Yes! 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 I don't know how you get flora and fauna and politics. Like, oh, wow, you know, the lady who's really good at gardening. Let's get her take on, on the latest election down south. So she has a piece. In the New York Times today titled, Dear Liberals, Come On Down. And she's not making the case that the liberal people should move to Nashville because Nashville is a great place to live. She's making the case that Nashville is a hellhole. So we need to come in and conquer Nashville from the outside. What? No, thank you. In fact, we moved our entire company to Nashville to avoid people like you. That was the whole idea. You think people are moving down to Florida, moving down to the American South? because they want to hear from the same liberals who they are attempting to escape right now. They just follow people around shouting at them. Come on now, dog. They're the hall monitors of, of planet Earth, these folks. It's like everybody just wants to stay away from them. They're following you around, trying to give you a, a, some sort of detention card. It's amazing. So she has an entire piece about how terrible the South is, but you should come down here and help her make it not terrible again. She says, red state legislators have perfected the art of voter suppression, which you probably know. I don't know. They haven't, by the way. They've also gerrymandered the South's blue cities into political irrelevance, which you may not. Well, I mean, gerrymandering has happened at every level. There has been no net gain for Republicans versus Democrats nationally this year. Come help us grow, says this liberal. The new gerrymandered district lines are based on current data. With your help, we can outwit craven GOP calculations about where residents reliably vote Republican. Once you're here, you can help us register voters in disenfranchised communities and help drive them to the polls on election day. <laughs> Gay. Changing what happens in red states is the surest way to change what happens in Congress. But railing on social media from your blue state won't change a thing down here. If you want to change Joe Manchin's mind about climate change, you'll need to move to West Virginia. Yeah, good luck with this. Really, nigga? They're like, yeah. The, the, the dripping scorn that so many people in this sort of particular coterie of humanity have for the rest of humanity while wanting to rule them is truly, you can't, you can't govern the people you hate. You can't govern people you think are idiots. You can't govern people who you treat with utter disdain. Fact. And say to them, we're going to make your life actively worse today in pursuit of some glorious utopia in the future. You can't do that. And then when you fail, claim that people are somehow, it's their fault that you failed. Is y'all right upstairs? I know what you're thinking. It's time to binge some more Ben Shapiro videos. Well, you are right. You should. But first, like and subscribe. Perfect. I'll see you in the next video. To her and I guarantee you, Paul, they had the same problem in gearing up for season two. No one wanted to be with her. She didn't have the cachet she had when she first left the royal family, claiming racism and mental health problems. Now she just had to make it on her own, and their reputations have been so damaged here. All they got was I'll pass. God, please no. Yeah, there's a million other podcasts they can do if they want to tell stories about how you know terrible their childhood was. There's plenty of other opportunities, but I like what was said by uh, the. United Talent Agency CEO, he's in trouble for saying this, but he says, turns out Meghan Markle was not a great audio talent or necessarily any kind of talent. Come on now, doll. And you know, just because you're famous doesn't mean, doesn't make you great at something. Why is he in trouble for saying the truth? Because they don't. Hollywood's not based on truth ever, any, any piece of it. So God bless the man for saying what we all know is true. <laughs> But, you know, it really speaks to sort of the juxtaposition between the positioning of this podcast and what the reality was. Her fake saccharine voice. Go back and look at the clip where Mariah Carey says to her, you're a diva, too. And she was saying to Mariah, you're a diva. Mariah said, you're a diva. And, oh, what's my <laughs> idol? Is y'all right upstairs? 
calling me out just the over the top dramatic she was pathetic she wasn't good at it he was right um and so what did we see in the press she got an award for like top podcast by some group i never heard of uh. that's how hollywood like the agents and the people around her manipulate us trying to make us believe this thing is a success it's special she's nailing it and yet they weren't getting the downloads anytime after the first couple when people were tuning in because of curiosity and they didn't get renewed because if there really was something special and award-winning about this thing spotify would have sucked up her laziness and put the team around her to make it successful they didn't have the appetite because it was a loser and they knew it Joe Biden, of course, is a historic president because he's the only person who can fall upstairs. But he's also uh, continuously lying about any knowledge uh, to do with his son, and that's getting worse by the day. Whistleblowers who are genuinely brave, not the ones who just anonymously kept dropping against Trump, uh, most of which was garbage. And then he was out there saying, God save the Queen. Another wonderful fortnight for the free world. God save the Queen, man. What do you mean by that? I I don't have anything for you on that. I have no clue what was going on there. Why did he say that? Why, why does he say enjoy your senior year? Why does he say things like this? They come out of nowhere. And I do think, you know, I used to go visit my Nana. My Nana lived on her own until she was 100. And when she turned 101, she had to go in to the home, right, where she could get better medical care. Nice. And I heard things like that from some of her, you know, colleagues in the in the <laughs> senior citizens home fellow <laughs> inmates right i'm just saying that's the only time i've heard such nonsense get blurted out with absolutely no connection to what's happening in the room of course the problem is he's the leader of the free world are you sure about that well, of course, the stress of the presidency, right? So we saw Barack Obama, fit bloke, go from sort of dark hair to grey hair in the space of his eight years. This bloke starts as a corpse. What is the expectation of him at the end of four, let alone eight? I, I've got two words for you. OK. Kamala Harris. Uh... That's what truly strikes fear in the hearts of most Americans. And they need to get real honest with themselves about the fact that that's the reality if this guy gets reelected. It may not be death. I'm not wishing this man a, an untimely death. Of course not. But he is pushing 86 by the end of that second term. Fact. And we already see the mental deterioration. So he could be you know, pushed right out of office thanks to his cabinet members if he becomes incapacitated any further mentally. More than likely, if he gets reelected, they won't do that. We've, saw, we've seen what they've done to, with John Fetterman, this senator in the state of Pennsylvania who can't put two sentences together either. They just keep pushing him into the voting box so he can vote the way they want. Well, duh. So maybe they'll do that with Joe Biden. I don't know. But at this point, it does look a little like elder abuse to make this guy run again. He won't have a debate, even though 80 percent of Democrats want him to debate his Democratic challengers. He won't do it. And I really think their whole plan is working right now, Paul, which is get Trump to be the nominee on the GOP side. That'll motivate the voters. And Biden won't really have to run or put himself out there and put words together. Yeah, right. 100%. California always uh, at the front of stupid things, and they've decided now to pass a new law that's particularly insane against parents who want to take care of their kids. This can't be allowed. This has to stop. Why? Why? It passed the House in the California State House, and now it's going to go to the Senate. And it would have to be signed by the governor, who has presidential aspirations. And if this guy signs this, he's done. This isn't like, oh, trans people should get care, right? They call it gender affirming care. This is the California uh, lawmakers saying, if you don't affirm, quote, affirm your child's gender confusion, and they don't define what that means. It could mean you refuse to get his penis chopped off when he says, uh, you know, I, I'm a girl. That doesn't make sense. Um, you could be labeled a child abuser. You could be treated as a criminal, the same as a sexual abuser of children. And anyone who has a duty to report, like a third party source, like a school or an advocacy organization, would be able to report you to the authorities as a child abuser. <sighs> Boy. It, so the original bill was, Let's just have whether they're affirming and offering gender affirming care as a factor, a custody battle judge might be able to consider. But then this guy, Scott Weiner, who I believe has no children, uh, added an amendment saying, 
let's take it one step further where we could label them child abusers. We'll change wow. the whole definition of abuse. And it got passed. These lawmakers actually passed it in the House in the state of California.